Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're adding custom properties to our debug panel that we can add from anywhere in any script. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to use the written version of this tutorial or download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. In the last episode, we added a simple debug panel to our front end and manually added a frames per second reference. That's great, but to really make this debug panel useful, we need to be able to add any property or variable we want from any script that we want. We could manually code those into the debug script, but that's going to get real messy real quick, and it's not very flexible or modular. To make this more functional, we need to use the auto load feature or what's known as a singleton. Singletons are nodes or scripts that are automatically loaded first in your game. They are always loaded and they can store global variables, which is what we're going to be taking advantage of today. Our core problem is that we want to reference our debug script from anywhere and run our add debug property to add new debug items to our panel. The problem is that it's difficult to reference that exact script from everywhere due to how Gato handles scenes and objects. So we create a global script that we can auto load and then set our debug script as a variable to reference from anywhere. First, we create a new script called global.gd in our scripts folder. Go to project, project settings, auto load, then add a node named global and click add. This brings up the create script screen where we can change our script location and create. Notice this checkbox here that says enable global variables. Make sure that baby's checked. The script is going to be pretty empty and that's totally fine. We just need to add one line for our purposes today. This variable will hold a reference to our debug panel node, which holds our debug script. We can directly reference the node in our script because this global script loads before all other nodes. To connect the two is really simple. In our debug script, go to your ready function and add this line. Global can be used to reference our auto-loaded script from anywhere, and then we can work within it, calling on our debug variable to equal self. This sets the debug variable reference in our global script to equal our debug panel node. Now that we can access our debug script from anywhere, let's clean up our existing debug script and adjust our add debug property function so that it's more modular. We can delete or deprecate these lines here because we're updating how this code is going to operate. We'll replace our old function with our new add property function. We'll run this function every time we want to add a new property to our debug panel. When run, it sets a new variable called target. This will hold our new label node that will be created each time we run the function. Because we're calling this function sometimes from process functions, we need to update our label text. And because we don't want to add another line to create the label node, then another line to update it, we're going to run both processes in the same function like this. First, we check if a label node already exists with our target property title by using the find child function. If the node does not exist yet, we create a new label node, add it as a child to our property container, set our name to our title, then set our text to equal the name plus the value we pass in our parameters. If the node already exists, we don't need to create it. So we use an else if statement if the debug panel is visible. Again, there's no need to run the updates if you can't see them. Then update our label text. We can also add this line to reorder our labels within our parent container. We just need a new parameter that we can pass when we call the function called order. Then use move child to move our label node target to the position we set order. With our function in place and our debug script accessible everywhere, it is incredibly easy to add a variable or property to our debug panel. Let's get our current movement speed, for example. In our player controller script, head to the process function and add the following line. This references our global script, our debug panel, and then the add property function. Within our function parameters, we set our name for our custom property, what variable we want to pass for our value, and its order priority. And that's it. You just need that one line. It's going to create the property first and then update it every frame. Go ahead and test it in our scene and see how our speed changes when we walk versus when we crouch. 
And again, this line can be added from anywhere and it'll place it right in our debug panel. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the written tutorials and the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.